Kevin, Kevin Kalan. Uh, I maintain a few modules. I'm a freelancer and so on. A lot of you already know me, so I'll skip the details. Um, this is a presentation on coder upgrade and kind of like just whatever I have time for. Hey? I'm sorry, I don't know you, and I'm going to watch this video online, and can you tell me who you are and your username? Oh, uh, well, my username is Wiz1Solutions. Uh, what else do you need to know, viewer? <laughs> Plus one! <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so, um, yeah, I maintain Meetup API, fill PDF, and and technically co-maintain features extra if you if you consider committing co-maintaining. <laughs> Um, and so again, this is going to be about particularly the coder upgrade portion of the coder module. And so the coder module in itself, a lot of you who make modules probably know about it. It tells you what's wrong with your module, sometimes in excruciating detail. But this is about the coder upgrade part of it, which helps you move your module code from you know a major Drupal release to the next major Drupal release. In this case, from six to seven. Um, it's pretty helpful, but as we'll see, it's not entirely complete, and you still have to do some work to actually get it to work. An amount that I'm finding is increasing, but I'm it gives you a good starting point. It, it kind of like sets you along the path to know what to look for and what, what kinds of things have changed. So, um, yeah, and then besides that, yeah, I'll show you some of the main gotchas that sort of got me, that weren't obvious with it. So I used this initially to upgrade fill PDF from 6 to 7 because someone was like, I want to work on the Drupal 7 version, but there's no Drupal 7 version. And I'm like, I don't have any time, but I'll run it through Coder Upgrade and you can do it. And then it seems like I'm working on it a lot anyway, but forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I kind of have been through the process. Um, today, I'm just like to demonstrate it. I'm going to run Meetup API through it, but then I'm probably going to use fill PDF to show you what I found out. So bit of both there. So if we go over to the actual screen, oh wait, no, that's not the actual screen. Actually, it's my browser. Okay, so um, you want to install it on the version of Drupal that you're migrating to. So in this case, 7. So this is a fairly vanilla 7 site with a few modules on it. Coder, obviously. And um, it has some dependencies to get Coder upgrade to work. You need, like, grammar parser, and I think you can put SQL parser on there too if you want, and it can do various things. Oh, and if you don't want to, if you don't want to use it on your site, you can go to, you can try going to this live site, this boom, upgrade.boombatower.com. Uh, I've had mixed success with that. It, it hated my file. It was like, this doesn't have a module in it, and it did. So, maybe it worked. I've heard people have good success with this site, but um, if that ever shows up. Basically, it's just running what you can run yourself, and it's probably faster and easier to just do it yourself. So, um, skipping away from that, oh, okay, there it goes. So this is more or less what you see. It doesn't come out that well at my resolution or something. But anyway, long story short, um, if you go to your Drupal 7 site, you go to configuration, uh, obviously turn on the module, coder upgrade, under development, and then um, you'll, you'll be brought to this screen, and probably if you're on this directories tab, it'll probably be empty when you start. Mine's not, because I have some stuff in there, but it'll probably drop you on the upgrades tab, so it shows you what it's going to do. So it's like, okay, you know, you want the core API changes, essentially. You, I would run coding standards afterwards, once you've got the main thing done. Um, extensions, you can usually leave this alone. I guess if you've got, like, a hook, information file you might want to run you might want to check PHP because those are usually in PHP or if it's a profile a test or a theme extension as well you can do that but what usually interests you if you're like a module maintainer upgrading your module which is probably that's a large probably use case for this even if it's a custom one is the directories one because what you can do is on your server you just drop the old module into let me figure out Well, you, you drop it into your files directory, slash coder underscore upgrade, slash old. So, okay, there we go. Yeah, so if you go to files, coder, upgrade, old, 
So like you just, you know, you download the the package from Drupal.org and then you unzip it or untar it into here, just like as is. And then it'll show up in that on that screen that we saw. So then it's pretty much the to get started, you just check the box and you hit convert files. But before hitting that, I want to tell you about something that I ran into, which you may or may not, but it's useful to know. By default, Coder Upgrade has this box checked to use a separate process and it basically runs this like script um, on the on the command line with the PHP executable and it didn't work for me like I didn't get any output so I found by unchecking it and just run, having it use the same page request to run it it worked so if it's not working then try that and uh, yeah you can get debug output and all this kind of stuff I think most of these are just default settings don't update Drupal core modules. <laughs> Drupal already did that. So, um, you can check the box, convert files, and then it will write the files out into a directory quite predictably called new. Ignore this thing about module conversion code not being run. It in fact was run. <laughs> I don't know why it says that, but it, it did run it, because if we look we look here, see it's there. And then like you will probably wanna if you're gonna edit these in this directory, you probably wanna like change permissions and stuff. So I'm gonna use my you new know, whatever I called it alias to do it. Okay. So um your password wasn't shown for some reason. Can you, can <laughs> you do that again to tell, tell us what it is? <laughs> That makes use of Drush DD, by the way. So, just a little tidbit of information. There. That tells me the Drupal directory, and then I add sites default files. Okay, you didn't need to know that, but there you go. Um, okay, so it drops it here. All right, so let's see. Let's see what it put in there. It's probably I already actually have it open here, obviously. So let's just wait for that to load. If you don't use Vim, you should eventually. So, okay. So what you're gonna want to search for? when you look in the module now is to do. So I would just search for it case insensitively because it actually sometimes it puts to do in caps and I think sometimes it puts it with at to do. So yeah like here. Oh wait no that's me. <laughs> okay so this one though. Um, if, you, if you haven't documented any functions it will tell you to document the function. So um, I'm just gonna kind of ignore that because you know whatever. Oh, permission. So the old hook perm is now hook permission, and okay, and it has um a description for the or rather a title and a description for the actual permission. So you can give it a human readable name. So if like um you know you can make things like what what's the difference between published comments and published comments without approval? You could use a title to make that a little clearer, or you know whatever. So it's going to ask you to do that. So like you might want to change it to, you know, um, administer meetup API, you know, instead of like the computer looking one, since all of the other ones probably look normal now too. And then you can add a description. So that'll help people know what it is, which is kind of useful. Okay. And that is apparently all I do in there. So it's not a whole lot there. The info file, the one change that threw me off is that now you have to tell it all your files. And it loads these files when it loads your module. So like if you have hooks inside of includes and your or or conflictingly named functions, like like for I had a function in Phil PDF that was called Phil PDF Forms. And there's a hook, hook forms. So it's telling me like your hook forms has bad parameters, and I'm like, what hook forms? And then I'm like, why is it? Why is it? Wait, why is it loading this include file? Oh, the info file told it to. So if you have any, if if you were relying on Drupal not loading your files for your function names, don't name them after hooks unless you want hooks. So that's a heads up there. But yeah, it'll. But you can see Coder Upgrade figured out my files and it put it in there. You will probably want to change your version or just delete it because Drupal.org will fix it for you. It doesn't really fix that. Um, see, it, it made core 7x 
preserve the dependencies. Infopy didn't change too much, but it, it moves it. I'll show you an install file in a second. I mean, yeah, that's that's essentially. Let me show you. Let me show you what it did for fill PDF because there's a lot more in there. So if I still one thing about the install file that you'll see it doing is that if you have, you know, if you're calling Drupal install schema in your install file, which I guess I took out, anyway, it'll comment it out because Drupal install schema is automatically called and uninstall is called when you when you uninstall the module. So you don't need that anymore. Um, not much, not too much there, maybe. Let's look at some more, some more to dos. No, that's just a to do. Oh, I think I already added in this one. Okay, let me read. This, this project is uh, still being actively updated right now, especially because of the D seven push, right? I think so. I think that they probably want patches with more routines. Like to you know upgrade more stuff that it doesn't upgrade yet, and the coder review part as well. But catch things it doesn't I mean, catch. Would you say it's safe to say that it would easily get you the eighty percent that you would definitely need right off the top, or maybe a little more, a little less? I would say gauge? a little. In my case, it was a little less, like sixty-five for sixty, sixty-five percent. Okay. Like it gets you, it gets you the essential stuff, like the essential hook changes and so on. But what about what's some glaring missing spots that you had recognized? Let me, um... Fields. Fields? Okay, that's a very good one. A yeah. lot of it depends on what, how different 6 and 7 are. Like, field sports are really terrible. Um, oh, yeah. Database sports are actually pretty good, depending oh. on how your database was originally written. Um, but that that's actually going to be the biggest difference. Like, permissions, that's just a string to an array. Yeah. It's mainly the difference in the data structures. It's good to know. So, fields and database iffy fields is definitely jQuery also. That's um yeah. I'm gonna make that gonna be my lightning talk. Probably theme function. That's tacked on. Function. Um right. yeah it's terrible. But um yeah yeah the database is, is reasonable. Wait, wait, something caught me off with that. If you if you're just getting one row, you have to add this fetch thing to it. Like just arrow fetch if you use DB query. And it will it will keep your DB queries as DB queries even though now there's DB select which in a lot of cases is better. So you would still want to sort of learn about DB the next generation and so make your stuff you better. DB results wrapping a DB query. Oh, it's even. Oh yeah, yeah. DB result it it'll change that to fetch field. Okay. For you. Yeah, it does. It does pretty well, but it will it will put to dos on all your DB queries, as we should see in a second. Um, if if and it will tell you like you know, please make sure this is correct. Did it do it? Yeah. Okay. So I just re I just reran it for this so you can see what originally happened. This code sucks. You should change it. All right. Couple minutes. Yep. Want to start taking questions, maybe? Let me let me start the. Um, the JavaScript, the okay. jQuery thing, and then I'll take some questions. So, uh, oh well, only a you couple minutes. Did you have a jQuery demo as well? No, no jQuery demo, just a gotcha. A okay. big, that'll probably be a gotcha for a lot of people, like the first time they use jQuery code in Drupal 7. Um, there was, okay, so, and then here's an example of, yeah, here's an example of, of DB stuff. Please convert this statement to the D7 database API syntax. And it pretty much comments out most of your database queries and tells you to change it. And this actually, this syntax actually works, essentially, oh, except that your placeholders have to be changed to other things. Well, anyway, just learn about the database API because I don't have any time <laughs> to tell you. But there's one thing that really got me for a second, which is how jQuery works in Drupal 7. Drupal 7, if you're familiar with jQuery's no conflict mode, where the dollar sign does not refer to the jQuery object, that is on. So anywhere you're using the dollar sign to mean jQuery is not going to work because, um, yeah, there's there's a whole issue out on it and stuff. But there's a wrapper you can put around your jQuery code to get it working again. And it'll work like around anything you want, even if you have Drupal.behaviors inside of it, as far as I know. So if you just put that around, then it'll work. Let me find the example here where that was. I think it was, it was the settings. So it's 
probably up here. How many people feel they're probably going to fire this up with some of their custom modules for clients for their own work or projects? Do you have a couple of us? Okay, here we go. So, like, you see that I'm using the dollar sign here. This stuff doesn't work. It says dollar sign is not an object in the Firefox um, console or whatever jQuery console thing you have. So that's the old one. Let me show you the fixed one. Okay, so this is the fixed one. Um, you can see it's very not very it's not a very complex wrapper. Oh, and also notice like the attach thing on Drupal.behaviors now. You want to look into that. If you go to that you know that big page of converting 6.x modules to 7.x, it's got all this stuff on it. So that's your first stop if you run into like an incompatibility and you're like, what happened here? But don't look at the scroll bar, please, when you go there. It's very small. It'll probably kind of scary. <laughs> so, um, the wrapper is simply open parentheses, function, dollar sign, open braces, close braces, close parentheses, and then jQuery inside of parentheses. So that tells it somehow that the dollar sign means jQuery. And that's all. So any questions on this? About common Drupal 7 peculiarities or running coder upgrade or if it does something or doesn't. Are, are you available? Wait. Are you available to do these upgrades for hire? <laughs> <laughs> oh for hire, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap. I was gonna ask how many people here can't wait for the Drupal 7 version of their module or their favorite modules? <laughs> Decent fair number. Okay. So Apparently Kevin will here. do it if you hire him. <laughs> <laughs> There's no questions, I guess all right, sweet. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try stopping this.